Welcome back everybody. Little Chris here with another pool lesson. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the ghost ball and its effectiveness it can have to improve your aim when shooting at a ball. Let's begin. Many beginning players that I've seen when they're learning how to play this game make a very common mistake in thinking that they have to aim at the contact spot of the ball that they're trying to make. In this particular example, in order for us to make the eight ball in the corner pocket, the eight ball would have to be struck right here on its side. Hopefully what you can see is this piece of thread that I've laid on the table that goes through the center of the cue ball to the contact spot, because this illustrates the line of aim that most beginning players will actually make. Now watch what happens when I take the cue ball and move it closer to the eight ball and see where the eight ball is actually struck. We went from wanting to contact the eight ball right here to now we're contacting the eight ball right here. A very small difference, but this difference is enough to miss the shot. If you try to draw a straight line now through the center of the eight ball and through uh, the cue ball, we can see that the eight ball will most likely contact the rail right here. We may be fortunate enough that the eight ball still might be able to go in depending upon the conditions of the table as it might hit this rail here, hit the point, and then go into the corner pocket. What we want to do though is we want to be more accurate and avoid the rail altogether and just go straight into the corner pocket off of the point. So if you're not supposed to be aiming at the contact spot, where are you supposed to aim? Well, that is what the ghost ball is. It is going to give you what is referred to as the aiming spot. Imagine, if you will, that if the cue ball were to correctly strike the eight ball in order for the eight ball to go in, the cue ball would literally look like this. Contacting the eight ball exactly where it needs to be contacted in order for the eight ball to go straight along the rail without touching it, hit this point, and then go into the corner pocket. So when you're actually aiming, imagine now that if we just take another ball and place it right next to the eight ball where it has to be contacted in order for it to go in. So what you're trying to do now is that you're trying to take the cue ball and aim at the very center of this ball in order to make the shot. But in reality, this ball is not going to be there. That is why it is referred to as the ghost ball. As I try to move the thread now to where I will hopefully illustrate where the center of the ghost ball is going to be, which hopefully should be somewhere right around there. Because now if I take the cue ball and roll it along the thread to the end, you can see now that we're going to contact the eight ball right where it needs to be contacted in order for it to go in. Whereas in the previous example, you saw that we actually contacted the eight ball right about here because we were aiming at the contact spot and not at the aiming spot that the ghost ball actually provides us. Now let's see how we can actually use the ghost ball in practice. Here I've set up a particular shot where I'm going to try to make the eight ball into the side pocket right here. If you have a practice partner, this makes this a lot easier to do. I'm gonna take the one ball and place it right next to the eight ball where it has to be struck in order for it to go in. Now when I actually get down to aim at the shot, I'm actually just going to aim right at the very center of the one ball. As you're sitting here making all these minor adjustments until you actually feel like you're going to hit the very center of the one ball, have your practice partner move the one ball out of the way. Take a few more practice strokes and then execute the shot. So what do you do when you don't have a practice partner or you're actually in a game or a match? 
you cannot take another ball and place it next to the object ball that you're trying to make to give you a visual representation of where the ghost ball is going to be because that would be considered a foul. But here's something you can do even during gameplay that is not a foul. First, let's understand that on average, the size of a cue ball is about two and three eighths inches. In this particular shot, what I'm gonna to try to do is pocket the one ball here into the corner pocket. So what I'm gonna to do to help me visualize where the center of the ghost ball is, I'm actually going to place my cue right behind the one ball, right next to where the contact spot is to go into the corner pocket. I do not want to get so close to the one ball though because I don't want to risk touching the one ball and committing a foul. So I'm just pretty close to it but not enough to worry about risking touching it. So because the size of a cue ball is 2 and 3 eighths inches, I'm actually going to move the cue back roughly about an inch. If I want to get precise, it's going to be about an inch and 3 sixteenths uh, behind the one ball. Where my tip is on the table now is roughly where the direct center of the ghost ball is going to be. And this is exactly where I want to aim. So what I'm going to do now is pick up my cue a little bit so that way I can rotate the cue right over the center of the cue ball. I'm now already in line where I need to be in order to shoot the shot. And all I'm doing now is focusing on the spot of where my tip is. So as I get ready to aim, all I'm focusing on now is that spot that I found on the table. I don't even care about the one ball anymore. As long as I can see that my cue ball is going to roll right over that spot on the table, I should be okay. So after I take a few practice strokes, I'm just going to try to execute the shot. Thanks again everybody for watching. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to use the ghost ball technique to improve your aim whenever you're taking a shot. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I have plenty more videos that I plan on making that will continue to improve your knowledge and your skills at this game. Take care everybody.